Hello and welcome to Rhino's Aura's Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Another series win for the Orioles. Sadly, if maybe things had gone slightly differently in the first game, maybe we'd be talking series sweep against the Phillies. Though at the same time, maybe making Philadelphia Phillies spend a bunch of resources let's say, pitchers and pinch hitters and players and whatnot, <clears throat> maybe allowed the Orioles to win the next two games. Never know. For sure. As you can see, I am on MassInSports.com. Let's get to game one. As I mentioned, Philadelphia Phillies. They scored five. Orioles scored three. This is the first game, Friday's game, from Camden Yards, final in 11 innings. Scroll down. As you can see, teams were tied at two at the end of nine. Both got one run in the 10th, and the Phillies scored two in the 11th, and the Orioles were able to do nothing. Cool. Cool. Westberg hitting leadoff in this game does get a hit. Eh. Does keep getting opportunities to hit leadoff on occasion. Just doesn't seem to work out greatly that many times. It's somewhat disappointing. You would like somebody to be able to take the reins of the leadoff spot away from Gunnar Henderson. Let Gunnar Henderson hit a little further down in the order be able to drive more people in. Maybe just stack the bottom of the lineup a little more with somebody that can get on base a little better. Maybe. Rutschman in his usual two spot, DH this game. A hit and an RBI, also worked the walk. Mountcastle, no hits. O'Hearn pinch hit late in the game, was not able to get a hit. Yeah, I mean, Orioles have good average or base percentage when pinch hitting, but couldn't do it this time around. Henderson hit cleanup. One hit, also worked the walk. Zero runs scored and zero RBIs. Did not work out this game. Though I would say hit him third, not fourth, but however. Uh, Santander, two hits, an RBI and a run scored. Hayes, a hit, also worked a walk. Mateo, oof. Kowser pinch hit late, nothing. Can, one hit. Stowers, pinch hit late, nothing. Wow, over three in pinch hit appearances. Told you, I mean, you go to the well once too often and it's not going to work. Mullins, one hit, did score twice. Once because he was the extra runner in extra innings, so, you know. Also doesn't count as an RBI when he gets driven in, which is why you see two RBIs, but the Orioles scored three runs. Mullins, Rutschman, Westberg with doubles, Santander with a home run. That extra, that time where I mentioned that Mullins was the extra man running, he scored, and of course, it was a play at the plate, and of course, the umpire was like, no, nah, he's out. But then you, you looked at the replay, and you immediately looked at the replay, and you immediately saw, well, he's safe. How did you miss that? Catcher tags him up on the chest, but he had his hands in there. I don't know why. Looked like he had good position. He just decided to call in favor of the Phillies instead of the Orioles. That's cool. Whatever. It's very exciting play. Not doing it justice right now, but I mean, in extra innings, the Phillies already scored one. Wild pitch. So Mullins takes off, and of course, the brick looks very nice, but does have a tendency to be somewhat harder and has the ball bounce right back to the catcher. So makes the play a lot closer than it should be. But still, Mullins was safe, and it was so obvious that he was safe. It was obvious in real time that he was safe. That's okay. Call him out. 
Kyle Bradis gets the start in this game. Yeah, if you follow the team, you know what happened. He does. He does. Did, do, 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 do. He did. He does. He does. We go. He, he does. Bradish does throw five innings in this game, only allowing three hits, two runs, walking one, striking out four. Throws 74 pitches. It was unclear after the fifth inning, after the five innings. After the five innings, after the fifth inning. Yeah, I think either works there. Why he was removed. Now, the next pitcher that came in, usually if it's an injury, they get as long as they want or need to warm up. That didn't happen, so it left us somewhat confused. Was Bradish removed for, due to an injury, or was it more precaution? No, it was due to an injury. Definitely that sprained on a UCL. Definitely coming back to rear its ugly head for Kyle Bradish, who is actually now on the injured list, which is disappointing. No further update other than it is that sprained UCL acting up again now. What extent it's acting up, uh, we, you know, we're not doctors. Still getting more tests and such. Keegan Aiken, in relief of Kyle Bradish, does throw three scoreless innings. Only throws 30 pitches, too. So that's kind of why he was left out there for three innings. It really picks up the bullpen. Especially when you give up no hits, no runs, no walks. In those three innings and strike out four. I... Wow. Yeah, I mean, two, three years ago, if you saw that Aiken was in the game for three innings, you would have figured, well, he gave up like four runs because the Orioles were getting their butts kicked. Well, not the case anymore. Which is, I mean, it's great for us, and it's great for him. It's shocking how some players can develop. Especially when it's like they're just being thrown in there to the wolves, you know? It's not like... He developed a lot in the minor leagues or something. It seems like Aiken's getting a lot of his development, a lot of his progression is happening at the major league level. Was a luxury the Orioles could afford two, three years ago, and it's paying off for him right now. Kimbrell gets the ninth inning, tie game, but, you know, Brandon Hyde decided to go with his closer, which is fine. Kimbrell does allow a hit, but no runs, no walks, does strike out one. And yeah, lots of Philly fans in Camden Yards. It's a very short trip. You know, I mean, it happens with Yankee fans and Red Sox fans and all that. It's not, it's not that long of a trip. And it's also, in a lot of cases, it's just as expensive, if not cheaper, for them to come down here. So yeah, there was definitely some fan interaction between Kimbrell and all the Philly fans that apparently think he's the anti-crust. But, however, he looks fine. I think they're a little pissed off that he didn't look this good in the playoffs last year, but we'll see about the playoffs this year. Long way away. Cano in, on the in for the 10th inning. Only gets two outs in the 10th inning. Does allow a hit and a run to score. It was an unearned run because it was, you know, the extra run. Does walk a batter. Does strike a batter out. Not the greatest performance by Cano. Not even a full inning and he allowed a hit and a walk. Ugh. He doesn't seem to like pitching in the ninth inning or later. Seventh inning, eighth inning, he is where it's what he's okay with, but like when it's like your last time to defend, he doesn't like it. Odd that he can be that good in, let's say, an eighth inning, but not that good in a ninth or a tenth inning. It's weird. Perez gets a final out in the tenth inning. There was a playing the matchup by Brandon Hyde kind of thing there. Perez does get the out. Does give up a hit though. That's fine. Did have runners on base, so it's not like he was put in a great spot to begin with. But, it, however, 
Jacob Webb in there in the 11th inning. Didn't have that good of a performance either. Disappointing we're saying this about guys like Cano and Webb who've come in in very big spots and have performed flawlessly. Not happening this time around. Full inning pitch for Webb. One hit, two runs, only one of them earned. Walked one, struck out one. Disappointing the way that game turned out. But the next two games turned out wonderfully. This is game two, Saturday's game. Philadelphia Phillies two, Baltimore Orioles six. Yep, put their hitting shoes on today. Though not as not, not good as a hitting display as Sunday was, but pretty close. Henderson back up in the leadoff spot. Two hits and an RBI. Rutschman, no hits, but had an RBI. Also walked once. Mountcastle, a hit and a run. Scored O'Hearn, two hits. Mateo pinch running late and does score a run. Santander, two hits, four RBIs. Two runs scored and walked once. Westberg, nothing. Mullins, got a hit and work a walk. Kowser, no hits. Hayes pinch hitting late. Again, the lefty-righty matchup thing that Brandon Hyde's playing for. Well, Hayes does get a hit and a run scored in two at-bats. Arias, two hits and a run scored. Arias, one of his hits was double. Santander, his two hits, both home runs. Yeah. Is worth mentioning that as much as I have said that Santander wasn't doing as well, yeah, I always seem to forget he doesn't like when it's too chilly. But when it gets warmer, you know, like June and May, he just starts hitting the ball all over the place. <clears throat> Though at the same time, it's not like he's the only guy that, do, that does that. Gets warmer, people get more comfortable, and the ball actually flies a little better. Something may, may, may be worth considering moving him back up into the lineup. Or maybe three. Then maybe, you know, he's your... Guy driving in the runs and Henderson can stay there and lead off. Maybe. Rodriguez gets a start in this one and we needed some... We needed a pick-me-up from a starter. Rodriguez goes seven innings. 99 pitches, which is a little too high for my liking, but he did finish the seven innings in less than 100 pitches, which I think is good. It's good enough. It's like right there at the limit, you know. He does give up seven hits, but you know what? I mean, seven hits in seven innings isn't too bad, I guess. Because he does give up two runs early, like Rodriguez always does. Like the first and the second inning, you can almost be sure that Rodriguez is going to give up two. But for some reason, the next four to five innings, he shuts them down. Why? I, I don't know. Usually, when a hitter... Gets their second or third at bat against a starting pitcher. They do better. But apparently, Rodriguez has flipped that. Somehow. Only walked one batter over their seven innings. So that's why you kind of take the seven hits. Because he is being fairly accurate in the strike zone. Striking out six along the way. A little less than we're used to with Grayson Rodriguez. Usually he's like one and a half strikeouts per innings pitch. But that's fine. Baker on in the 8th inning. Yes, that's right, Brian Baker. Remember, I told you last video, Coulomb to the I.L., Baker to replace him. And no no rest for the wicked, I guess, huh? Get right in there in a very close ball game in the 8th inning. Well, I mean, Brian Baker has done this for this club before. It's just over the years... Certain other pitchers have maybe turned the corner a little more, and Baker has options, which is kind of, you know, sad to see, but, you know, 
sometimes you got to have that revolving door in a bullpen to make sure you can cover some of these innings. No hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. There you go. Kimbrell on in the ninth inning. Not a save situation. It was when he started warming up for the ninth inning, and then the Orioles scored three runs. It's all your fault, Santander. It's all your fault. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Get the three runs. So, again, Kimbrell interacting with the Philly fans. It's a little shaky to start out with because, you know, it's not a safe situation. There is a little less adrenaline. So, of course, Kimbrell walks the first batter, but then he... Telling everybody to relax, you know, kind of like Aaron Rodgers, and then just strikes the next three out. So no hits, no runs, one walk, three strikeouts for Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, Philly fans are definitely not happy that he's performing this well for us right now. Though they're not usually happy about anything. I mean, he boots Santa Claus for Christ's sake. Weirdos. Oh, well. so weird like how certain fan bases act and how certain other fan it's just so weird that it's and we're, they, we're, and we're like this close to each other how are things so different in Baltimore <coughs> excuse me <coughs> are things so different in Baltimore than they are in Philadelphia it's so weird game three Sunday's game Philadelphia Phillies three Baltimore Orioles eight Henderson still hitting leadoff. Schwarber hit a leadoff home run earlier in the series, and Henderson had to get the tie back. Yeah, one hit, an RBI, and a run scored. Leadoff home run. Struck out three times, which isn't great. Almost why I don't really like Henderson at his leadoff too much. I feel like he almost strikes out too much. Santander actually doesn't strike out that much. So potentially, you lead off Santander. Santander lead off Gunnar Henderson hitting th third. Could work. Don't know. I think it's worth a shot. Rutschman the same line. A hit, an RBI, and a run score. Only struck out twice. Mountcastle hit, a run scored, struck out three times. Wow. Lots and lots of strikeouts between your first three hitters. Not great. Oh, her no hits, but he walked twice and scored a run. Santander a hit an RBI and a run scored. Hayes, defense replacement late, did not receive an at-bat. Westberg, two hits, three RBIs, two runs scored. Mullins a hit. Was not able to be driven in. Disappointing. Cowser, two hits, two RBIs, a run scored, and walked once. Arias, one hit. Home runs by Rutschman, Henderson, Westberg, and Kowser. Yeah, wow. Kowser stole a base. All this and all these runs, all while Mountcastle, Burns, and Westberg had errors. You don't see that much. One, you don't see three errors like this and you're still able to win a game. But I guess that's what happens when you hit well, how many home runs? One, two, three, four. Four home runs. Oh, and you have your ace on the mound. More good news from the starting pitching. Seems like we had too much bad news from the starting pitching. Time for some good news. Burns, who he can't match Rodriguez's innings, only goes six innings. Does allow seven hits, but only two runs, only walking two, striking out seven. Perez in for the seventh inning. Not being as locked down as we have seen Perez in the past. Gives up two hits and a run. Doesn't walk anybody and does get a strikeout. Nick Vespi in for the seventh, no, what is this, the eighth inning? The eighth inning. Perez pitched the seventh inning. Vespi in for the eighth inning. Vespi on the roster to replace Kyle Bradish. So, 
what exactly we're going to do about the rotation, we don't know. Because as of right now, only got they only have four starters, right? Rodriguez, Burns, Povich, Suarez, Irving. Well, that's five. That's five. We're up to five. We're at six. That's right. Very nice showing for Nick Vespi. I really do like seeing when Nick Vespi is brought back up to the club. That he actually gets in the game. It seems like we've seen too many times where he's brought up because there's a spot open and then doesn't get in the game. Like, come on, Brandon Hyde, use the kid. Pitches the full eighth inning. Does give up a hit, but no runs. Did walk a batter, but he struck two out. Now, on to the ninth inning. You can see how it was 8-3, to three, but somehow Cano's in here for a save. Yeah, well, remember what I said, that he didn't perform too well in the ninth inning? Performed a lot better this time. Tough to say why it was. Potentially because as the ninth inning started, the Orioles have a five-run lead. So, it's just less pressure, I guess. It ended up becoming a safe situation because on Jacob's web... What the hell was I trying to say there? While Jacob Webb was going about getting the first two outs of the ninth inning, all them errors started happening. So while Webb doesn't give up a hit, a run, or a walk, and he strikes out one, the bases are loaded. So, yeah, there's only one out, and the Phillies are down by five, but with the bases loaded, it does become a safe situation because the tying run is on deck. Bring in Cano for this one. So while, yes, he usually doesn't perform that well in the ninth inning, he usually performs well enough to get out of it for the majority of the part, I guess. And since you had a five-run cushion, I mean, he could have given up a grand slam and we wouldn't be losing. So, again, less pressure. He gets a strikeout. He gets a strikeout on four pitches. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Maybe he does perform well in the ninth inning. Just got to be a certain situation. Got to have a little bit of a cushion in the ninth inning. And Cano will be fine. That's probably what it is. I mean, he's still young in his, you know, relieving slash setup man slash high leverage back of the bullpen kind of dude. He's relatively young in that sense. Oh, I didn't get the, I didn't do this. I didn't open a schedule tab. This is article here written by Steve Molesky. Really the main important thing that I want to talk to you about is an update on Dean Kramer. Dean Kramer, I think as of this article, he was like, it was. this was a Saturday article and Kramer was scheduled to pitch Sunday in a rehab assignment. That rehab assignment did take place. He got up to about 50 something pitches which usually the, this club, this organization, wants their starters to get up to like 70 to be able to, you know, okay, we'll bring you back and put you back in the rotation. So Dean probably has, Dean Kramer that is, on that familiar basis with him. Maybe one more rehab start. That part isn't really updated. But he did pitch, you know, he did throw the 50-something pitches and no setbacks with his tricep issue. Come to this article written by Rock Kubako. Again, right here. Bradish on the IL. <clears throat> Sprain UCL. What exactly the whole extent of it is. Still going under. under still going under. Undergoing further tests. Maybe try to figure that out. He did have that injection in spring training. It was supposed to help heal the thing. But here it is, rearing its ugly head again. 
on the IL, and that's why Vespi's around. Though Vespi does have some length to him, he could potentially be a spot starter if they want to. But I mean, the Orioles have five starters for right now, so can potentially get through this next stretch and then maybe recall Kramer after one more rehab assignment. Let me get to the schedule. We are coming to the end of this video. Upcoming series for the Orioles. They are going to New York to face the Yankees. Yes, big time AL East matchup. The top two teams in the AL East are facing each other right now. Or not right now, let's say. Today is Monday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. That's when the game, that the next game is, and the series will start. Tuesday's game scheduled for 7.05. Wednesday's game scheduled for 7.05. Thursday's game scheduled for 4.05. Why we're at 7.05 instead of 6.30, I don't know. Why we're at 4.05 instead of 1 o'clock, I don't know. Seems like when we're here in Camden Yards, that's what it is. I guess too fancy in... New York City for all that nonsense. Oh well. Then after that series is done, they will be on the road again going to Houston. So that is going to do it for this edition of Rhino's Orioles Report. Stay tuned for this coming Friday when I will talk about the series between the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino and this is Birdland.